Welcome back to the bench. That intro, what's that about? I normally don't do intros on this channel, but I found that on the computer from 10 years ago. And I thought it would be fun just to play that intro once. So, there you go. An old intro I didn't use much, but... Anyway, today we have the next amp board here to test on the analyzer. It's the TDA... 7264 marketed as a stereo amplifier 25 watts per channel I like this chip because it doesn't require a lot of parts as you see it has fixed gain so the uh, negative feedbacks handled internally so you don't have all the resistors and capacitors and stuff for that externally but well it's fixed gain but they usually set the gain to a level you would normally use anyway I did add input low pass filters on here which they don't show in the data sheet and uh, I haven't tested it but usually you want to have output coils on it as well so uh, pretty easy to lay out on a perf board that would translate over to a uh, Having a PCB made pretty easily. Ooh, Radio Shack. So yeah, have a lot of amps to get through, and uh, well, today we'll do this one. So without further ado, let's hook this up to the analyzer and see what it can do. Okay, it's all hooked up. Got the heat sink on there. On inductive load, connected to the Quant Asylum. From the power supply, I'll be operating it at 40 volts, plus and minus 20 volts. Down into the cap bank there, into the amplifier. And here are our kickoff measurements at 1 watt, 8 ohm, and 0.028% total harmonic distortion. The gain of the amplifier is measuring at 29. 31 decibels. Let's look at the data sheet because I'm not sure what that should be. Well, we're right where we should be. Closed loop voltage gain 30 dB with a range of 29 to 31, so we're definitely within that range. And the distortion at 1 watt, 1 kilohertz, 8 ohm, plus minus 20 volts, exactly what we're measuring. And we're pretty close, 0 0.02 typical rating. To be honest, I was hoping to see lower distortion like the incredible TDA 2050. You know, it's an order of magnitude lower than this. I was thinking, well, maybe they use similar circuitry inside the chip that they use in the 2050, but apparently not because this is measuring a little bit higher. Frequency response. I checked at both 4 and 8 ohm loads and it was the same. So looking at the low end here, 20 hertz, we're only half a dB down, which is just fine. That's because of the input coupling capacitors I used of 1 microfarads. Now you could use a higher value cap if you want to roll the base off even lower. But you know, 20 hertz is Consider the minimum of the audio band, and that's just fine. At the high end here, we're less than one-tenth of a dB down at 20 kilohertz. And again, that's due to the fact that I have RF blocking low-pass filters on the inputs. Not specified on the data sheet, but it's always good practice to have those in your circuit. So, long story short, frequency response is just fine with this amplifier. Okay, you got the power versus distortion curves here. And like I said before, my personal figure of merit for an audio amplifier to be considered hi-fi is to have distortion under negative 60 dB. In other words, 0.1% uh, total harmonic distortion. The good news is in both cases, 4 and 8 ohms, we are... Under that in the power band until we get into clipping, of course. But, you know, we start at a very low level. 
you know, are down below minus 70 dB, close to minus 80 dB. And we gradually increase until we hit clipping. And we, like I say, we stay under 0.1% with this amplifier. So we're go going above the 0.1 line here at about 16 watts, 8 ohms. And uh, that's 25 watts, 4 ohms. And we're going above 1% at 8 ohms at 20 watts. And 4 ohms at just a bit over 30 watts, close to 31 watts. Now they call it a 25 watt per channel amplifier because they're looking at 10%. And I uh, ignore 10% distortion ratings. That has no meaning to me. I like to look at the values at a more reasonable distortion levels. Frequency versus distortion. Around the 0.1 line, just peaking ever so slightly above it at 20 hertz. Around the 0 0.08 with the 8 ohm, the blue line there. And they both drop down to a pretty low 0.04% from around 200 to uh, around 2 kilohertz and it starts doing the high frequency rise we end up at 20 kilohertz at 4 ohms around point a little over 0.2 percent which is still pretty darn good and 8 ohms to slightly over the 0.1 line so I'd say this amplifier is performing pretty darn well now it's not in the league of the the TDA 2050 but like I say it's it's doing pretty good so there you have it the TDA 7264 stereo amplifier chip like I said easy to use it doesn't require a lot of parts to make an amplifier and I will link in where I did my original review of this chip this video here is more of a measurement type video but I did a, a more of a regular review while back on this nice chip if you need a little more power than these uh, bridged chips that operate at around 12 volts though you do need a higher voltage split supply to make these work but they do deliver decent sound and a bit more power for you and with that I thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one